Shalom everybody. Okay, as promised, I've come back on the Facebook Live for the third time today. And uh, each time I came about on Facebook Live for a different reason. Okay, and right now I am on Facebook Live to respond to probably one question. We recently had our first VMIT, Victory Meeting, okay? The VMIT is a monthly program that we run throughout the year. And this and every year the VMIT is will take place in a different church. And this year is happening in DOMC and many of you um, did join us last Saturday. Okay, January VMIT. And I'm looking forward to the next VMIT. So what I normally do is after every VMIT as usual, I will take questions that the VMIT delegates have in regards to the session that we ran on the latest VMIT. So we had VMIT on uh, last Saturday. Today is uh, Tuesday, a few days ago. And I have a string of questions being asked related to the VMIT session that we just had last Saturday. So welcome, welcome, welcome. For those who do not know me, I am Reverend Edmund Smith, the ex-transgender pastor. All right, it's really good to meet each and every one of you. So. I'm going to answer a question asked by one of the VIMIT delegates that attended. Um, I think it's not necessary for me to even mention the name of the person. So it's uh, just a question. His question was, what, cause, what causes the vacuum issue? Okay, what is the cause of the vacuum issue? Yes, I did mention the vacuum issue. And for your information, there will be a session in the upcoming VMIT. We have 11 more VMITs to go. So hold your horses, okay? You don't expect to know everything by just attending one VMIT last Saturday. Okay, there are 12 VMIT sessions. And for those who are just joining in right now, okay, the VMIT is basically a one-year program that happens every month. And if you are... If you faithfully attend the VMIT at least 11 out of 12 sessions in that year, in December, you qualify to graduate as a befriender. Okay, so I will not be able to teach everything in just one VMIT session as I did last Saturday. And by the way, last Saturday, okay, let me just show you. These are the two books that I've written that's behind me. And this is the VMIT textbook that I use for teaching my VMIT, you know, so... So there are 12 lessons here, so one lesson per month. So if people faithfully attend the whole year, by the end of the year, then they will receive a certificate of graduation that, you know, enables them to do the ministry of a befriender. So last month, for sorry, this month, January, the, the title was uh, An Introduction to sexual brokenness and the journey of recovery the vimit is all about sexual bro brokenness and the journey of recovery and who is good for the vimit the vimit is good for anyone 13 years old and above you know and especially for those who are befrienders and especially for those who are befriendies or maybe potential befrienders potential befriendies a befriender in in rlm context in victory context is someone who is who is um being equipped to reach out to someone else who is struggling with his or her sexuality. A befriendee, on the, on the other hand, is someone who is serious about going on the journey of recovery, okay, to overcome issues in relations to their sexuality or even relational issues, all right? So let me go back to the purpose of this Q and A video live, okay? I have got many questions that has been thrown in the Vimit DOMC WhatsApp chat room. Of course, I will be only, probably, I'll be answering just one of the questions. There will be. Uh, let, let me go through this Vimit textbook, uh, the index, and I will see. I'll show you. Okay, if those of you who have this Vimit textbook, by the way, it's on sale. It's twenty five ringgit. Okay, for if you if you uh, do not have it yet, please contact Joel. Maybe someone here uh, who's watching right now, you know Joel. So leave Joel's name and number below so that others can contact Joel to get this book. Okay, and it's twenty five ringgit. And basically, I'm looking at the index. You see, 
we just finished a uh, January Vimit, which is uh, last Saturday, and the session on um, session five. Session five would be January, February, March, April, May. In May, we'll go through session five, and the title of session five is the vacuum issue. So in that session, we will discuss further in regards to the vacuum issue. So someone asked this question, what causes the vacuum issue? Well, I'm going to give you a brief response to that so that, uh, you know, this Facebook Live will, will not be in vain. But nevertheless, please attend the other future vimits to get more depth on this topic on sexuality, the journey of recovery and sexual brokenness. All right? So... Before we, we talk about the cause of the vacuum issue, let us first define the vacuum issue. The vacuum issue is like... Uh, I, I, I'm sighing right now because I re, I, I'm trying to remember my own vacuum issue. When you have a vacuum issue, it feels like you have a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. And what does the vacuum cleaner do? The vacuum cleaner is always sucking in rubbish and dirt. And that's how it is with a person with a person with a vacuum issue. So some of you watching this video right now, whether live or the recording later, if you have a vacuum issue, you're always running after people. You are running after people to receive love. And very often, sex is mistaken for love. You're drawing sex into your life and you think you're receiving love, but that's a big fat lie from the pit of hell. Okay, sex is not love and love is not sex. And I say this all the time. And I'm going to say it again and again and again. Sex is not love and love is not sex. I can have sex with someone yet without, without any love for that person. And I can love someone so deeply without, any, without having any sex with that person. Alright, so that's, that's a fact. Okay, sex is not love and love is not sex. But very often, a person who is struggling with the vacuum issue doesn't get this. I mean, not all people with vacuum issue are having sex, rampant sex. I'm not saying that. No, but the, the, this is the thing about having the vacuum issue. You are constantly looking for attention. You are constantly, you pick, and not, not, necessarily from, not necessarily from everyone, around you but certain people and you want them to love you you want them to give you the attention okay so that's a vacuum issue you're running after people you're running after attention you are craving you're hungry you're thirsty for attention for love and let me tell you love is the answer to being filled what fills up what resolve the vacuum issue is actually love Real love, as the name of my ministry, real love ministry. Love is the only thing that can fill up the vacuum. Love, not lust, L-U-S-T, not sex, not anything ungodly, but love is the answer. And it's the kind of love that comes from God. It, the kind of love that comes from the people of God. The kind of love that is pure. So love. You could be having a mild vacuum issue, you could be having a moderate vacuum issue, and you could be having a severe vacuum issue. I had a severe vacuum issue. Denial is fatal, brothers and sisters. If you do have a vacuum issue, if you are that little vacuum cleaner, don't pretend like you are not. Okay? Because you're not going to go anywhere. Okay? The, the first step to resolving any issues, and in this context, in this topic, the first step to resolve your vacuum issue is to admit that you have it and you are one who is running after men or women. You are running after people. You are dying for attention. You can't live without, without wanting people to love you. Then you have a vacuum issue. You are crazy after people. Constantly you are going after people. One after another, you're running after people. You want people to touch you. You want people to look at you. You want people to say nice things about you. You're going crazy about being receiving attention from people. That's a sign. I mean, everybody wants to be loved. We were created to love. I'm not talking about this regular wanting to be loved. But if you are desperate to be loved, you are desperate for attention, you are running after men, you're running after women, you go online looking for men, looking for women. Hey, it's a time to pause and think, what's wrong with me? You are growing older. Don't grow old holding on to this ridiculous vacuum issue. 
You don't want to get HIV. You don't, you don't want to get HIV positive. You don't want to get anything that you don't deserve. You don't need. All right? So what you need, if you have a vacuum issue, what you need is to resolve your vacuum issue. But that's not the question I've been asked today. The question is, what's the cost? Okay, every child was created by God and given to a pair of men and women, to a pair of father and mother, supposedly. You know, a, that child, it's God's desire for that man and that woman to pour love into that child's life. Every child deserves to be loved. Not just by mother, like a lot of Asians think, but by mother and father. Every child that comes on this planet is supposed to be loved by the father and mother. And let me tell you, love has gender. A man is only able to give out masculine love and a woman is only capable of giving out feminine love. Yes, that's a fact. So if a mother is loving his her child, and the father is absent, the child is just receiving feminine love. And let's say, let's say if the child, someone just asks what, if, what happens to an, to an orphan, that's why a lot of orphans, not all, but a lot of orphans that are not surrounded by, by godly or good men and women have a lot of issues eventually. You know, so if, if there's no biological father, there should be a foster father, a stepfather, an uncle, a grandfather, an older brother, a male teacher, and the list goes on. So if um, a woman has a child and she's a good mother, but there's no man, it's the, instead, of trying, instead of the woman trying to love that child more, extra doses of love, and she says, oh, my child does not have father's love, I'm, I as a mother going to give my child more love. No, you are giving your child an extra doses of feminine love. It does not work. The child needs just enough of feminine love and the child needs just enough of masculine love. You know how many how many wings a bird need to fly? Can a bird fly with just one wing? Okay? No way! So when a mother or when a child or human being receive feminine love and that wing is being built and then when a child receives masculine love, another wing. So every human and every child needs a proper double, a pair of wings to fly and soar with wings like eagle. So as a mother, okay, or as a father, there is no wife around. She has passed away or she ran away with another man or whatever it is. It's your job to make sure the child receives love from the grandmother or godmother or auntie or someone female. Because only a female, only a woman is able to give out feminine love. Only a male, only a man is capable of giving out masculine love. And that was my problem. I never had masculine love. I grew up with zero masculine love. I did not have a father who loved me. I did not have a grandfather who loved me. I did not have, I had, I have three big, but I have three older biological brothers, but they were too rough and tough for me. They ignored me. <laughs> they did not pour their love into my life while growing up. I never had uncles, I never had nothing. I just had nothing. While growing up, I was never loved by any male authoritative figure. So I had, I would say, I would, confident, I would confidently say, I started my life journey on this earth with zero masculine love. Did my father hate me? No, my father did not hate me. My father loved me, but my father did not speak my language of love. So when you talk about loving a child or just loving a human, loving anyone, we got to remember love is not easy. There are a lot of songs written this way. Love is not easy. You can't say you love me and do whatever you like. You can't say love me and you love me with your language of love. You are supposed to love me with my language of love. If I say I love my daughter, I'm supposed to love her with her language of love. If I say I love my son, I'm supposed to love my son with his language of love. So it's not just about loving your children. It's not about just about loving your spouse or your parents, whoever you want to love. But you've got to love people with their language of love for them to receive and perceive your love. So going back to the questions I've been asked today is, what's the cause of the vacuum issue? The cause is this, that individual did not perceive love. Either if that individual did not perceive any masculine love, 
then there is a high chance that individual is going to develop a masculine vacuum issue. If that individual did not perceive and receive feminine love and there's a high chance this individual is going to develop a feminine vacuum issue. So if I have a feminine vacuum issue as as a, as a human being, I'm going to go around looking for woman's love, woman's attention, and I will misinterpret love. I think that love is sex. I start having sex with lots of women, women because thinking that they are, that's going to fill my vacuum up. But that's a big fat lie from the pit of hell. So to answer the question I've been asked, what's the cause of the vacuum issue? It's a deficit or it's a zero. It's, it's zero receiving of love. Yes, so if a child or a human do not have masculine love and feminine love, I'm telling you, this person is just going to go around looking for love from everywhere, even fake love from the world. And that's where, that's how I ended up, I ended up having sex with men at the age of 13. I was not, at that young age, I was not looking for sex. I was looking for love. I was looking for love. I was looking for masculine love. Because I never ex experienced masculine love growing up. As for feminine love, yes, I received, from, I received love from my mom, my grandmother. And when my sister came about later, she also loved me. So I, I, I had never had a feminine vacuum issue. You know, I never ran after women. I have never ran after girls, but I ran after men like crazy. I was sexually involved with hundreds of men. And I'm not saying this proudly. And I'm saying this, that happened to me. I'm, I'm in my 50s now. Okay, from the time I was 13 all the way to 24, I had lots of sex with men. I allowed men to use me as a piece of meat. And I thought I was being loved, but I was not. I only began to experience real love from men when I was 25. That's when I officially began my journey of recovery and God revealed to me that what I needed is masculine love, not masculine sex. Mas not masculine sex. Masculine lust, L-U-S-D. Yep, so... Everyone here who's watching this video right now, whether on Facebook Live or the recording later, it's your job to go forth and love someone out there. If you are a man, if you are a male, you have, you have the power. Yes, you have the power to give up masculine love. Yes, you. You who's listening to the sound of my voice. And if you are a female and if you are a woman, you have the power. You are powerful. You have the power to give out feminine love to that girl, to that boy. To that elderly person, every human being, no matter how old they are, they need love. People need love. God, God is love and He created us to receive love and give love. So don't be stingy with your love. And how do we love people? We love people with the language of love. And not your language of love? I'm, okay, I'm looking. I'm, let's uh, Welcome Victoria Flores Inting. Welcome. Let's see if I want to love Victoria. I'm supposed to do my work to find out. There are five languages of love. So if I want to love Victoria, I need to find out her top three. Every one of us have our top three languages of love. I acronym them WAGTT. W-A-G-T-T. WAGTT. W. Words of edification. A. Acts of service. G. Gifts. Giving gifts. T, spending time. Lastly, touch. Whack. T, T. So let's say if I want to love Victoria, I need to find out if, let's say, Victoria's top three languages of love would be gifts and time and words. I need to be using good words, good Good gifts, sweet gifts that touches her heart and spending time with her. And she's going to she's gonna feel love. She's going to be filled with my masculine love. Yeah? So, when someone enters into the journey of recovery in my ministry, in real love ministry, and they say, you know, the first thing we discover is, do they struggle with uh, one of the three issues? There are three issues that I speak about in the V-Meet. And for those of you who are not part of the V-Meet yet, come and join us. It's not too late. Okay, so come, it's once a month and yeah, you will be educated on all these kind of things that I talk about. 
So I hope that helps. I've, I believe I've responded to the question. So what the cause is not having that masculine love or feminine love, that, that's, that, that is what that, that caused people to have a vacuum issue. And if you have a vacuum issue, you know, you need to resolve them. You need to actually uh, find out is it masculine or feminine. And then you need to allow God to send that correct gender that you have a, vac you have a vacuum for. God bless you. Don't forget, if you need this book, or even if you need the other book that I wrote, this is uh, my other book. This, the one I showed you earlier, this is for the Vimit, this is a Vimit textbook. But this, on the other hand, is a book for anyone who could read. This is called She Is My Brother, and this book is uh, consists of two sections. The first one is Most Asked Questions That I've Received. Since I've been doing this uh, since 1999, I've, uh, I've compiled those questions with my responses and a lot of this, even what I'm sharing today, is, is in this book actually. Okay, and the second part of the book is a devotional that I wrote. And this devotional is very good, as for anyone can use it, but especially for those of you who are in the journey of recovery, resolving all kinds of sexual or relational issues. So if you want to purchase this book or this book, this is 50 ringgit, this is 25 ringgit, get in touch with Joel. I hope somebody is dropping down Joel's name and number below. Okay, and then you will be able to read and learn and grow. Education is power. Looking forward to see all of you next VMIT next month. Every month there's going to be a VMIT. VMIT stands for Victory Meeting. And for those of you who are not in touch with me and you like to be in touch with me, so just uh, find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Just search my username or handle whatever you want to call it. One word, ex-transgender pastor. I have lots of information, lots of videos that you can just learn to, to benefit yourself as a befriender or befriending. God bless each and every one of you. Shalom. Have a great, great Tuesday. And if you're on Zoom, we have a prayer meeting tonight in our ministry. Come and join us. Okay, drop me a WhatsApp message at 016-665-8773. 016-665-8773 and I'll do my best to respond to you as soon as I can. God bless. Shalom. Take care. Jesus loves you.